so I, I wrote out a statement to uh, help me out here. Um, the problem is that um, my landlord has been engaging in behavior that is harassing, emotionally distressing, and intimidating in nature, in addition to stalking behavior. This is a landlord tenant dispute. There's nothing alleged in the petition, nor anything she alleged to you today that warrants a protective order for stalking. In today's video, we have a TPO hearing between a tenant and her landlord. The plaintiff is seeking a TPO against her landlord claiming he is stalking her. Is this a case of a landlord performing regular landlord duties? Or, is this a case of stalking? Let's see what the judge has to say. So, uh, it's Leonard and uh, Jeffrey Brown. Yes, Judge, I'm here. All right. There you are. Are there any witnesses? I don't have any witnesses, Judge. I don't have any witnesses. Uh, I didn't. Okay. Have, if you uh, both raise your right hands. Yeah, I swear for testimony you're about to give this petition for TPO is the truth, hold truth, nothing but the truth. Miss Leonard? I do. Ms. Le Mr. Brown? I do. All right. All right, Miss Leonard, start with the most recent event and work backwards. I don't want to hear anything that anybody else said that's not here. Okay. Um, let me grab my information here. Um, the problem that I've been having uh, with Mr. Brown is he's engaging in harassing and emotionally distressing and intimidating. Um, yeah, to, like look up or speak up because I can't. Can you hear me better now? Yes, thank you. Um, so I, I wrote out a statement to uh, help me out here. Um, the problem is that um, my landlord has been engaging in behavior that is harassing emotionally distressing and intimidating in nature, in addition to stalking behavior. Um, a couple of weeks ago, was sitting in the parking lot to the apartment complex, and he was just watching me. And then he moved his vehicle over to the side, uh, closer to where my entrance is, and again, he was just sitting there. It didn't appear that he had any reason to be there on the property. He was just sitting there watching me. That was not the first time that Mr. Brown has engaged in that type of behavior. Also, at one point, um, it was about 6.30 on a Saturday. I had no advanced um, communication from Mr. Brown. I was cleaning uh, in the house and I had to have the windows open because my air conditioning was not working and he refused to fix it. And I heard him screaming my name outside. So I walked away from the window. I mean, this is my bedroom window. And this man is standing outside screaming for me with, with no good reason. Didn't knock on the door, didn't call, didn't text, um, just standing outside of my window again, watching me. So I walked away from the window. Um, I had a guest that was staying with me. The guest, uh, he spoke with my guest through the window and he said that he was there to look at the stove. With regard to the stove, Your Honor, it had been leaking gas over a month before that. I had to have Atlanta Gaslight come out. I don't, I don't want to hear about landlord tenant stuff, about repairs and stuff like that. This isn't landlord tenant. Right. I understand. I'm just getting to the point of what's been going on. So mysteriously, things have started not working in the apartment. Uh, Mr. Brown has sent me several uh, text messages and emails uh, stating things like I would uh, the CDC moratorium would be over soon. I would hate to have to put your things on the street. Um, I filed this against you. He said he told me that he filed a motion against me. I called the court. It had not been filed. Uh, all of this behavior is just extremely intimidating. It's to the point now where if Mr. Brown makes an, an appointment to come here to do any repairs, I always have someone on Zoom with me or I have someone here in the apartment with me. I do not feel comfortable around him. I do not have off the, top, um, the, off the record conversations with him. His behavior has been escalating. Um, he'll make appointments to come here for repairs and he shows up with no tools um, and nothing to make repairs. It's like he's making these appointments to come in and surveil what's going on in my apartment. It's extremely uncomfortable. 
I realize that there is, you know, a, a monetary issue here. Okay. I, I totally, absolutely recognize that. But that does not give Mr. Brown the right to engage in this stalking, intimidating, and harassing behavior. If if he weren't my landlord and he was someone else on the street, this would not be acceptable. I've had to call the police twice. And when I do contact the police, basically I feel like I'm being brushed off. And again, because his behavior seems to be in, you know, becoming increasingly aggressive, I seriously fear for my safety. And I, I don't want to be around him. I don't want to be alone with him. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Brown. Yes, yes, Judge. So this is a landlord-tenant dispute. There's nothing alleged in the petition nor anything she alleged to you today that warrants a protective order for stalking. I have not engaged in any behavior that violates the statute or in any way trying to intimidate her or putting her in a reasonable fear that she should be in harm for herself. The only communication I have with Ms. Leonard is simply relating to landlord-tenant issues I can go down a whole laundry list of code enforcement complaints she's filed against me. My only contact with her is relating to trying to address issues. Um, so th I'm surprised that this the temporary protective order was even granted because there's nothing in there that even alleges any threatening communication that would warrant a TPL. So I would just ask the court to deny her petition for a temporary protective order per or permanent protective order because I've not done anything to harass or, or harm her or put her in any kind of reasonable fear she should have safety for herself. I'm merely engaging in landlord tenant responsibilities, Judge. Your Honor, I would like to counteract that statement. When I filed this petition, I included the emails, the text messages. I have video of him sitting there surveilling me. I have audio of him. You haven't, you haven't presented, you have evidence something you want to present other than your testimony? I mean, nothing, no evidence has been presented except for your testimony. I provided it when I filed for the order. This hearing. is the evidentiary hearing. Okay, so would you like me to, I do have the text messages and the email. This is the evidentiary hearing. So would you like me to read the text messages? Ma'am, this is the evidentiary hearing. I'm trying to understand what you mean. Here. This is the hearing where you present your evidence. Okay, and so and Judge, I'll just add one more thing. She said that I was looking at her. Only time I come to the properties and meet contractors or repair people. Uh, so that time she made me talk about I was there. I wasn't looking at her. I'm sitting in my truck waiting for somebody to come to do repairs on the building. And then I think she also made an allegation about me yelling at her through a window. She had filed a code enforcement complaint about a leaking gas stove. I knocked on the door for about five minutes. No one came to the door. I walked around to the side. I saw her in her unit. I think she was vacuuming. And I just yelled her name to get her attention so she could let me in the door. I didn't yell anything about her trying to harm her or harass her. It was simply trying to address issues in the apartment. Okay. I'm pulling up the text messages, Your Honor. Give me just one moment here. Um, the last text message, because I had a file for the TPO and I was not sure whether or not he had been um, served yet. Uh, again, good afternoon, denying entry into the unit after receiving advance notice is a violation of the lease agreement. I am on the property and need to access the unit to repair a hole in the bathroom vanity. Please let me know if you object to me accessing the unit. Your Honor, that was the third time that he had said that he would access the unit. I was not at home and due to his behavior, I didn't feel comfortable with him being here. Um, he says, uh, there was one that says that his text is uh, calling me to access the inspect the drains and fill any uh, gaps around the pipes. He said it would be here between 12 and 2. My daughter and her husband and their children were here uh, when he came for that. Mr. Brown again came with no tools, no professionals, no, um, no items to fix the hole and the hole is still there. Um,
I'll go back here to the Okay, this is another one saying good afternoon per lease agreement. This message serves as notice that I will enter the apartment tomorrow between five and eight to replace gas stove, inspect unit for water leak, and check smoke detectors. Also, I will need access to windows to measure for screens. You do not need to be present as I have a key to the unit. Thanks for your cooperation. Again, my daughter was here when he came. Mr. Brown did replace the stove that had not been working for over six weeks. He told me I had to replace it. And at that time, he did not measure for windows. He did not check for leaks. There was a leak under the bathroom sink that he has not repaired. And again, this is not the first time that he said that he was coming in to do these things, but he did not. Um, the other one, uh, this was on the fourth, on the 24th of July, which was a Saturday and it was after 6.30 PM. I just stopped by to check the stove. I observed you through an open window. You ignored me. I also spoke with individual residing in the apartment. So making the assumption that someone was residing here and informed him that I need to check the stove. I waited outside and no one came to the door after approximately 10 minutes. I do not feel safe entering apartment or sending one to enter apartment until you have vacated the premises. Please let me know your move out date. Most of his um, messages end with those types of statements. On that day, your honor, he did not knock on my door. He did not call me. He did not text me. He has several ways to be able to contact me, not to mention those hours for him to be there were completely inappropriate. I sent my friend outside to speak with um, Mr. Brown because I didn't want to have contact with him and offered him entry to the apartment so that he could check the stove. Now, you're coming to check a stove that you told me I had to have a certified check technician to service. To the best of my knowledge, Mr. Brown is not a certified plumber or, you know, gas technician. So again, these are all means of trying to intimidate and pressure me into situations that make me feel uncomfortable. Um, reasons to try to push me out of the apartment uh, because I am under the CDC moratorium. And, you know, it just, it really needs to stop. For me, your honor, um, he knows that I suffer from mental disorders. It is having a profound impact on my depression, my anxiety, knowing that he has a key to my unit and he could come in at any time. Um, I have a recording of the last time he was here. Uh, he asked me a question about the bathroom. I answered it and he looked at me and told me to be respectful. I've never been disrespectful to Mr. Brown. I always address him as Mr. Brown in all of my emails and texts. Um, I do not yell, I do not curse, and I have as little contact with him um, as humanly possible. Uh, in like regard to him coming in for the stove, good afternoon. I never heard back from you on whether you contacted the appliance repair technician to have the stove repaired at my expense. Also, have you contacted a licensed HVAC company about the AC repair? Let me know. Are you still living in the unit? Do you have an expected move out yet, date yet? Thanks. Again, still under the CDC moratorium, he knows that I'm here. So it, it's just repetitive, Your Honor. The, it's He's using email and text to harass me in every way that he can. He sent me an email that said, I don't believe the CDC moratorium is gonna be extended past uh, June 30th. Um, so I need to know your expected move out date. Um, I would hate to have to put your things on the street. And this is constant. Mr. Bram. You know, I would just say that what she's describing is just landlord tenant contacts. They do not meet the definition of the statute for stalking. I am in no way, shape, or form stalking her. And I ask you just to deny her petition, Judge. All right. Last words, Ms. Brown, Ms. Leonard. You're on mute. I'm sorry. 
the parent got me through my window and uh, sitting there watching me on the property, uh, to the best of my knowledge, do meet the statute for stalking and the behavior that he has partaken in, in terms of the, um, the excessive text and emails is harassment. All right. So, um, ma'am, he is the landlord. He's got a legal reason to be there. And if he has a reasonable reason. Ma'am, this is not landlord tenant court. He has a legal reason to be there. He's the owner of the property. If you're complaining and filing uh, complaints and want him to fix stuff, he's got to come there. And he's constantly. So talking. I'm sorry. I'm going to deny this, Mr. Brown. If your email is in the chat, we'll email you a copy of the denial. Like I said, with the holiday weekend, make sure you keep it on you um, for a week or two to make sure it comes off of GCIC. Ms. Leonard, also, if you put your email in the chat, we'll send you a copy of it also. Okay. Stay healthy and safe, and everybody have a good weekend. Thank you.